During the 14th century, a disease ravaged Asia, the Middle East and Europe whose devastation is unparalleled. It's estimated that between 100 and 150 million people died over a few short years. At a time where the world's population was around 350 million, making it the deadliest pandemic in recorded history. The bubonic plague was likely able to spread along the trade routes, both along the Silk Road and aboard merchant ships. Those infected by the plague would die in only a few days, often in extreme agony. Unaware of the cause and unable to receive any meaningful treatment, in today's video, we will cover the Black Death, its symptoms and the devastating effect it had on so many. The Black Death, otherwise known as the Bubonic Plague, is caused by the bacteria Yersinia pestis. It is a disease that can affect both animals and humans, though it is predominantly found on rodents and their fleas. A person affected with the Bubonic Plague will suffer from fever, chills and fatigue. But the telltale symptoms are large black bubos on a person's lymph nodes, on their armpits, groin and neck. These fill with dead blood and pus and will burst further spreading contamination. In addition to bubonic plague, pneumonic plague can develop, affecting the lungs and can be spread from person to person by infected droplets. And finally, there is septicemic plague where the bacteria will replicate in the infected person's blood. It can be a complication of pneumonic or bubonic plague, though it is possible for it to occur without the other. The disease favours infecting and killing rats and other rodents. It is capable of wiping out an entire colony in just a few weeks. Fleas that would drink from the infected blood of the dead rats would remain and feast until another rodent or human strayed too close. And so, the cycle begins anew. It was likely through the spread of infected fleas and their rat hosts that the Black Death was able to spread throughout the world. Rats favoured the damp and dark holds of the merchant ships, the perfect vector for spreading the plague. Rats in turn thrived in the unsanitary conditions of human settlements. At the time, waste of all kind was often dumped into the streets with little in the way of sewers. The first known instance of the Black Death arriving in Europe can be dated to a siege of the port city of Kaffa on the Crimean Peninsula in 1346. The forces of the Mongol Golden Horde were beset with the bubonic plague and in some early form of biological warfare, reportedly catapulted the corpses of the infected dead over the city walls. Whether or not this actually happened, it cannot be denied that the disease entered the city. Caught between the plague within the city and the Mongol forces at the gates, a number of Genoese traders fled by ships to the rest of Europe, calling at Constantinople, Sicily and northern Italy. As the ships would arrive at port, dockside workers would be greeted with a truly horrific sight. Sailors, both corpses and those dying from the disease displayed the black bubles marking them infected with the Black Death. The ships were held as it was established what was happening, though it was already too late. It was reported that even hearing the words of the infected was enough to transmit the disease. But by this point, the rats and fleas had been able to spread from the ship and began to infect the populations. This would be a story along the European coast, where trade ports and coastal settlements were infected. The speed in which the Black Death was able to spread is staggering considering the modes of transportation available. From the initial infection in Constantinople in May of 1347, by March the following year, most of Europe was under the effects of the Black Death. Only Iceland and Finland were spared from the disease. Once a town or settlement was infected, it would only be a matter of time for a large proportion of the population to be killed. For a time, a person will display no symptoms, yet will still be contagious. 
It would be far too late to quarantine the infected once they display symptoms. At the time, there was no understanding of germ theory. With many incorrect beliefs persisting as to the cause and spread of the disease. You may have seen the iconic Plague Doctor masks with the hooked beak-like nose and flowing robes. Whilst you may associate this outfit with the Plague Doctors of the Black Death, such an outfit did not exist until the 16th century outbreak of the disease. The long-beaked nose would be filled with all manner of herbs and spices, both to block out the smell of the rotting dead, who were often left in their homes to die alone. But it was also believed that the disease might spread through the foul odours. For the first outbreak, doctors relied on bloodletting and lacing the bubles to attempt to cure patients. It was believed at the time that proper levels of blood, bile and pus ought to be maintained for a healthy body. And so, by draining the patient, it was believed that the patient might be saved. However, such practices only spread contagious fluids and offered no treatment. Before the ready availability of antibiotics, there was an attempt to create elixirs to cure patients, one of which was made from treacle, ale, chives and charred eggshells. And as you can imagine, this offered no reprieve from the disease. It appeared the only solace that could be found was during the winter, as this was when the disease would disappear, only to resurface once the weather improved. The death toll would range greatly from city to town to village. Often, it would be around 25 to 30% of the population who would succumb to the illness, though it could be much higher. In Cairo, it is believed that 50% of the population perished, whilst in Florence, it is believed that 90% died of the Black Death. As entire towns were devastated by the disease, those who thought themselves well would flee, leaving ghost towns of the dead and dying. Families would be torn apart as the children would be left by their parents, spouses leaving their affected partner and brother leaving brother. Mass graves were used to accommodate the masses of the dead, with not enough time or available clergy to perform any form of last rite. Those that left would unwittingly carry infected fleas hidden within their clothing and would pose a threat wherever they may have ended up. As there was no viable explanation, many looked to other causes or explanations for their deadly illness. Some looked to the stars, believing there to be some form of astrological cause, whilst others saw the disease as a punishment from God for untold sin. Others pointed the finger at those deemed as other, with instances of Jews being accused of poisoning the wells, often followed by some form of pogrom. Whilst people realised that contact, particularly with the clothes of the infected could cause infection, it was never understood that it was the fleas and rats that caused the infection. The unsanitary conditions of many towns and villages only assisted in the breeding grounds of rats and their fleas, with the streets often covered in human and other types of waste. By 1351, the Black Death had taken its toll on much of the world's population, though it did leave behind more than corpses as its legacy. As a result of drastic depopulation, survivors found their labour in demand, often receiving greater wages or preferential treatment. As the size of the workforce could not be relied upon for the greater production, improvements in farming were pushed, as too was the focus on animal farming rather than crops. Although, such improvements often came in tandem with some form of resurrectionary laws preventing social mobility of the peasant classes. For some in Western Europe, it spelled the end of serfdom, whilst for those in the East, serfdom was enforced. Whilst the Black Death laid bare the inadequacies in medicine, it did highlight the importance of surgeons and the role they might play in the field of medicine. But for those who survived, an immense sense of survivor's guilt was commonplace. To witness half of your town or village and your friends and family die in a matter of weeks, only to be left alive without explanation. 
groups of flagellants, that is those who inflict pain and punishment upon themselves for atonement, appeared as one way of dealing with their guilt, flogging themselves bloody. Whilst the Black Death of the 14th century was the deadliest, it was not the last the world would see of the bubonic plague. The disease would flare up from time to time, lasting years and taking a heavy toll. It proved an ever-present threat occurring in Europe, the Middle East and Asia. Notable examples include the Great Plague of London in 1665, where around 100,000 people died, which was 25% of the population at the time. It was in the 1850s when the disease struck hard again, starting in China before spreading to much of the continent, to India and to Australia. It is believed that around 15 million people perished, with around 10 million dying in India alone. To this day, the disease still exists, though is largely kept in check by both vaccines and antibiotics. As is the case with bacteria, there is the fear of strains that become resistant to the drugs, as seen in a number of outbreaks in Madagascar in 2014 and 2017. There will be a handful of cases each year in the developed world, with the occasional death. Currently, the three most endemic countries are the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Madagascar and Peru. It is important to note that if the pneumonic plague is left untreated, it is 100% fatal. Although it would show up sporadically over the coming centuries, the disease would never again reap such a heavy toll as the Black Death of the 14th century. The Black Death can be seen as an example as just how far we have come in dealing with pandemics. From advancements in medicine to our understanding of transmission, we are truly privileged to live in such times. As our understanding only grows, perhaps one day humanity will be able to look back at the diseases that still affect us today, just as we look back at how far we have come from the events of the Black Death.